Hey guys, welcome back to another Dragonair Silent Gods video and a happy new year to everybody. In today's video, we're going to go over the new event for the Ardreth legendary hero that's going to be available in the second month of season two. So if you look here on my server, it is available in 10 days and one hour. So this will basically take up the whole second month of your season. So you're going to be fighting weekly bosses as well as having additional events throughout to do certain dungeons just to earn yourself some resources towards being able to buy yourself this new legendary hero so as for the actual hero that we're going to be able to acquire she is a very good uh, radiance tank so her uh, passive skill as she enters the battle the hero gains one stack of blessing every five seconds which is a permanent buff and cannot be dispelled that stacks up to 10 stacks when the hero's blessing reaches 10 stacks it grants 10 stacks of blessing to all allies so eventually this is going to give your whole team 30% increased defense and 100 extra resistance, which is really cool. The battle skill heals the ally with the lowest percentage of HP and grants them defense up to for 5 seconds. When the skill is cast on a target below 50% HP, the healing will be increased by 30% and reduces the recharge time of the target's next battle skill by 50%. And lastly, the ultimate skill. So this, is, this enhances the hero for 10 seconds, increasing all allies' healing received by 50% in the duration and strengthening the hero's basic attacks. When enhanced, the, each of the hero's basic attacks heals the ally with the lowest HP and has a 100% chance of dispelling one debuff from them. And to top it all off, Ardreth also has a defense in all battles aura by 30%. So overall, Ardreth looks to be a really interesting hero and especially has some great synergy with some of the better Radiance healers like Garius, especially when using the um, legendary artifact that grants shields on overhealing. You can get some huge shields with the ultimate skill of Ardreth at the same time. So overall, like I say, it's a very good champion to get and definitely one worth going for. So the reason for this video today is we've had some information that basically clarifies which bosses we're going to be facing throughout that second month. So the continental bosses that we've seen in season one and then obviously then they do become the uh, Chaos Shadow bosses in the last part of the season, so the, the final month. So they have all changed around this month, uh, this season, so we're going to get different heroes that we'll be facing each week. So the first one we're going to be looking at is Jorn. So Jorn is what you're going to be facing with your Radiant teams. So the way these bosses work is typically they'll use their battle skill twice and then their ultimate skill. So... Jorn's passive is he takes 30% less fire damage. Additionally, when the hero takes fire damage, there is a 30% chance of recharging his ultimate energy and that of surrounding allies by 10% and granting defense up to to the hero and surrounding allies for five seconds. This isn't too much of a problem because you're not going to be using fire heroes here. In fact, you'll be using radiant heroes, maybe with some ice supports because of the elemental bonuses. The battle skill that will be cast twice is sprays flames that burn enemies within range five times, each time dealing fire damage with a 50% chance of inflicting attack penalty two for five seconds. They also then backfire on the hero, each time dealing damage to himself. Uh, the way you can see here, this is a three lane damage ability. So as long as you've got your heroes on the sides, apart from your tank, you're gonna not you, well, you're not going to be taking damage from this skill. And um, obviously, like I said, that will be used twice per ultimate skill. And lastly, the ultimate skill is deals fire damage to enemies within range, reducing their ultimate energy by 25% and a 75% chance of dispelling all of their buffs. So this could be quite annoying, but at the same time, probably won't be too much of a challenge. And um, it's just a case of finding the right kind of uh, team to use from the Radiant element. As these do release, I will do videos on the teams that I'm using for each of these bosses to get the maximum damage or as close to it as I can. So yeah, stay tuned as we go into the second month. Like I say, each of these individual bosses I will have a video on. So next up, we've got the Necrosis boss, and it is one of the new uh, Thunderbolt legendaries being added to the game. So this is the boss you'll be facing with your uh, Necrosis heroes. So as an aura, it's got an enlightenment by 60 in all battles. I'm not sure if auras actually take, part, uh, take place on the boss, but we'll have to wait and see. The passive skill is it uses lightning to strike up to two random enemies inflicted with electrocuted every four seconds dealing lightning damage with a 70% chance of inflicting electrocuted on them for eight seconds. Obviously that does do damage, uh, well causes chain lightnings at their position every four seconds. Um, so you want to make sure your teams are spread out a bit or similarly to how you do in the Tempest domain to deal with the, electro uh, the electrocuted debuffs. The battle skill will be dealing lightning damage to up to two random enemies, each with a 75% chance of inflicting electrocuted again. 
And lastly, the ultimate skill is it grants 15% attack up to all Thunderbolt allies, which will just be himself in this situation. Then deals lightning damage to enemies within range with a 75% chance of inflicting electrocuted. So in my opinion, on this boss, you're going to want to make sure you've got somebody who can cleanse this electrocuted debuff or just block it entirely. Uh, with Necrosis, obviously they are paired with fire, so you are quite limited on options for um, debuff control. But just have a look at your roster and see what you can do to prevent that. Having somebody who can cleanse it, even if they are outside of the element, may be better for you. Um, because realistically, if there's no electrocuted debuffs going out or on your team, the damage is going to be quite minimal. So next up, we've got the Poison boss. And this one is a Frost Legendary, and it's Lasenia. So Lasenia has a passive skill that basic attacks cast an Ice Ball that bounces between enemies dealing cold damage with a 75% chance of inflicting Frost for 10 seconds. When it hits, the Ice Ball bounces up to two times and the skill prioritizes enemies that are not inflicted with Frost. On her battle skill, she'll mark an ally for six seconds. Uh, obviously, this is not going to be massively relevant. It will probably mark herself. I don't know how it works if she's on her own, but it will basically deal uh, cold damage to surrounding enemies with 100% chance of inflicting Frost for five seconds. So really, if you're using melee and they're around her, they're going to be taking this damage. Next up, her ultimate skill, so she summons an Ice Tornado at the designated location that lasts for 6 seconds, dealing cold damage to enemies within range every 1 second, with 100% chance of inflicting Frost. Now, personally, I use Lasenia as a kind of enabler to my Frost heroes. She can deal some decent damage, so I suspect this boss will hurt, so you're probably going to want to look to use as little melee as possible and have your team spread out just to avoid the Tornado damage and, of course, avoid the Snowfall Blessing damage as well. So next up, we've got the cold boss, and that is the Radiant Legendary Alton. So with all rally heroes, as long as they don't get the rally buff, their damage is severely reduced. So you're going to really want to make sure you're using somebody who can control the buffs going on to Alton. So my example here would be using somebody like Varesh to block the buffs that are going on him. So on his passive skill, when a rally at ally attempts to cast a skill that consumes rally, those uh, with Rally have a 50% chance to gain 30% damage up for 10 seconds. Those without Rally have a 50% chance to gain Rally, which will be immediately consumed. The Battle skill fires three orbs at random enemies, each dealing Radiant damage. If the hero has Rally when casting the skill, it consumes the Rally and the orbs increase up to 5. So obviously it's nearly doubling the damage from this skill if there's Rally on the boss. So you just need to be careful to make sure that this buff isn't active when the boss is going to be using its Battle skill. As for the ultimate skill, it creates a domain for 10 seconds, increasing the hero's passive trigger chance to 100% and firing an orb every 2 seconds at a random enemy to deal radiant damage. If the hero has rally when casting the skill, it consumes rally to reduce the firing interval to 1 second. So once again, this will be doing double the damage if there's rally active. So having somebody who can either remove the buffs or block the buffs completely to prevent the boss getting the rally buff is so vital. So I'm talking about heroes like Voresh, Vinyara is a really good option here. There's so many options within these elements that could slot into your team. So just make sure you're bearing that in mind when you're forming your team to face out on. So next up, we have got the fire team. So or the fire boss. So this is going to be the Necrosis legendary Azillus. Where is he? There we go. So Azillus is a summon unit. So it's going to do a large amount of damage with summons. So... Three seconds after an ally's undead uh, summoned unit dies, summons one skeleton that gradually loses HP where the undead creature dies. The battle skill deals necrotic damage to enemies within range. For each ally's undead summoned unit on the field, the skill damage increases by 20%. So if you're dealing with the adds that he's spawning himself, this isn't going to get the damage bonus. Obviously, that's the only way he's going to get that because he's the only unit to summon in this uh, fight. Um, obviously, it will use this skill twice before the ultimate skill, which deals necrosis damage to enemies within range and summons two skeletons, then grants 20% attack up to all summon allies for, 20, uh, for 10 seconds. So once again, the only person getting this buff will be the boss. So this could be a really good opportunity to use one of the new burn teams because they'll be able to help deal with the skeletons as they're spawning and prevent them from obviously boosting the boss's uh, battle skill damage. So maybe worth considering it's one thing i'm definitely going to try out myself i've got a burn team built ready for this 
And um, so lastly, the only uh, the last boss is going to be the one that we're using lightning teams with, and that is going to be the poison defense legendary, and that is Tower. So Tower's passive is each debuff on enemies uh, on the field grants 2% damage reduction to the hero. This effect stacks up to 10 times. The battle skill plants mushrooms around the enemies, which will taunt enemies within range for 5 seconds. When the mushroom dies, it deals derivative poison damage to the enemies within range with 100% chance of inflicting one stack of poison for 10 seconds and 100% chance of inflicting blind for 5 seconds. And lastly, the ultimate skill casts a spore cloud that exists for 4 seconds, dealing derivative poison damage to enemies within range every 0.8 seconds with 100% chance of inflicting an accuracy penalty for 10 seconds. If the enemies are under poison, the hero will have a 100% chance of inflicting attack penalty for 10 seconds too. So. As much as this is a tank, it's obviously going to take less damage. But at the same time, it can be quite annoying with the amount of debuffs you're facing. You may struggle to land your uh, defense penalty with either Witch's Remains or the uh, Epic Variant. So bringing somebody who can block these debuffs could be quite important to increase your damage output. But realistically, surviving this fight isn't going to be too bad, especially if you're using um, some of the options in the lightning element, like uh, the lightning and poison elements, like uh, throw a bath, for example, he could be really useful here. So the only other thing that you're going to want to make sure of is having somebody who can um, cleanse your team, because each debuff is going to give the boss more damage reduction, and that's not what we want when we're trying to reach 22 million damage. So having somebody like potentially Vikuk, the epic poison healer, who can cleanse two debuffs at a time could be really impactful for this fight. So those are all the bosses that we're going to be facing in the second month of the season in about 10 days time for my server and obviously maybe a little bit longer for everybody else but it's good to be prepared. So bear that in mind in the next couple of days, pick about pick out who you're going to want to build for your teams and start working towards them. Um, obviously as I say throughout this month as well we're going to have lots of dungeon events so you're going to be wanting to be able to spend your time in the dungeons farming gear. Uh, the only other thing that's worth mentioning as well is the way this works is in the first week of this release you can fight three bosses, the second week four bosses, the third week five bosses, and then the last week you will be able to fight six bosses, and then after that they will all become daily bosses with the new Chaos Shadows in the Otherworld Exploration in the final month of the season. So that is all for kind of preparing about this, uh, preparing for this bit of content. Once this does come out you will be doing these every single week trying to get as much damage as you can and eventually hopefully being able to pick up Ardreth from the um, Lunar Halo shop for 200 of the uh, currency. So best of luck to everybody in the second month. As I say, I will be posting videos throughout the month of the teams I'm using and how I'm getting on with it. The other thing I wanted to cover in today's video is it is time to draw the New Year giveaway that I did on the 29th of December. So I'll post that video up here if everybody, anybody's interested in how it works and what the giveaway actually was. So I'm going to put the winners up on the screen here. I have drawn them. So just to run through, first off is Yusuf uh, Alabao, 1967. Then we've got the Lupus Corridor, user FR7FU9GZ5V, uh, George Ipate, 4816, LOL AAA, uh, Jebby Vils, 1696, Jinmori Dragonair, The Lion King 1215, Dragos 1806, and Kami King 4602. So if all of those winners would like to add me on Discord, I will put up my Discord here. You can also find me in the Dragonair server or the Hell Hades server. Uh, but a massive thank you to everybody who got involved in the giveaway. And once again, a massive congratulations to the winners. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next video.